Hi everyone, this is Grace from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign Maker Girl Academy, and today I'm going to help you get comfortable using Tinkercad to create and design your own 3D prints. To begin, you're going to want to head to www.tinkercad.com. Once you get onto the website, it's going to look like this. And in the top right, you're either going to want to sign in or join now if you need to create an account. Since I already have an account, I'm just going to go ahead and sign in. When you've created your account or signed in to your Tinkercad account, this is going to be your home screen. As you can see, on the left side, 3D Designs is already selected. So all you have to do is go up here and click on Create New Design. After you do that, Tinkercad will take you, to your take you to your workspace where your work plane is. Essentially, this blue work plane is the build plate of the 3D printer, which is the flat part of the printer where your 3D print would get printed. This is important to keep in mind as you design your prints. But first, I want to introduce you to some basic controls in Tinkercad. And the top left is the name of your design. If you want to change that, all you have to do is click on it and then type in whatever name you would like. Then on the right, you can see all of the shapes that you can use when, desi when designing your 3D print. To start, I'm just going to click and drag a box onto my work plane. Once a shape gets dragged onto your work plane, a lot of tools are available to you. First, I'm going to start with some basic controls we have in the top left here, including copy, paste, duplicate, trash, undo, and redo. Before manipulating or changing any shape, though, I just want to let you guys know that you want to make sure that your shape is selected and make sure the shape you want to be changing is selected. So here you can see there's a little blue highlight around the shape I have selected and all these sort of boxes on and around it, which we will get to later. But first to copy your shape, you want to first make sure it's selected. And then all you do is simply press this copy button up in the left corner and then to paste that shape that you just copied, you click the paste button. And see that this will paste your object kind of on top of or next to the original shape that you copied. And from here, I can go ahead and move the shapes, separate them, and move them wherever I want to on the work plane. Now to duplicate shapes similar, all you have to do is select the object you want to duplicate, click this duplicate and repeat button, and it will paste a exact copy of that shape right on top of the original shape that you selected. And once again, you can move around the shape and see, move the shape around and see that you have two of the exact same shapes now. Um, moving on to undo and redo, all you have to do is Simply click the arrow that will undo what I just did, and then redo will bring it right back. And similarly to um, everything that I just showed you there, to delete items, all you do, once again, make sure that object is selected, and click the trash button up there. So now if you want to take a minute, pause the video, kind of practice those skills and maybe play the video once you feel confident in your ability to use those features of Tinkercad. Okay, welcome back. Now looking at my work plane, you may have noticed that I dragged a sphere onto the work plane. I'm going to use this to show you how I group objects together. So first what you're going to do is select the objects that you want to group together all at once. Now we've learned how to select one object at a time, but to select two objects together, what you have to do is click outside and away from your shapes and drag to create this rectangle. 
and you're going to want to make sure all the shapes that you want to group together are inside of this rectangle or square. Once you have them inside the rectangle, you want to release your right click and you'll notice that now both shapes that I want to group together are selected. Once they are both selected, all you have to do is go up here to the right and click the group button. This um, groups the shapes together and as you also may have noticed, the sphere turned red and now both shapes that are grouped together are the same color. So this is how you know that it works and the shapes are grouped together. And now I can move the shapes around and they will move together as one unit. <clears throat> now to undo this, what you want to do is unselect the two shapes and then um, click on it and make sure they're both selected and just press the ungroup button. And now once you've ungrouped them, click away from the shapes and then if you click on one, you can see that you can move them each separately again. Now you may notice too, when I select a shape up here in the right, I have the option to choose it as a solid or a whole. Now a solid means that the 3D printer would print it out just normally how you see it here, whereas a whole it would create a hole in an object. So to make a hole, all you would simply do is select the object that you want the hole to take shape in and click hole. And now the object is a hole. So if I put it in the box, you can see it would create a hole in that shape when I print it out. But for now, we're just gonna leave that as a solid and drag it out. And if you want, once again, you can maybe pause the video and practice grouping and ungrouping objects and maybe um, experimenting with the whole as well. Welcome back. I hope you're feeling a little bit more comfortable using Tinkercad. And now I'm going to show you how to easily move around your workspace and change the size and dimensions of your shape so you can really get the design that you want. And first I wanna start off with just one of my tips is that if you can, if you're on a laptop and can use a mouse that's not on your laptop or desktop or whatever you're using, having a handheld mouse really makes this a lot easier, but it's doable either way. So if you don't have one, it's totally fine. But first I'm gonna start off over here on the left side of the screen. We have controls to help us move around our workspace. And the first is this view cube at the top here. You can simply click on a side of the cube and as you can see, your workspace will rotate to that side. Also, you can click and drag the cube and rotate around your work plane as well. Additionally, if you're moving around your work plane a lot and don't really know where you are, you can just click this home view button and it'll take you right back to the home. Another way that I find is easier than the view cube if you do have a mouse, or maybe even if you don't, is just to simply right click and hold it down and then drag. And that is to me a lot easier just to like kind of see different angles and get to exactly where you want to be looking at. Another control on the left is this fit all in view button. And if you click that, what's gonna happen is all the shapes on your work plane kind of get up in your face and you can see all of your shapes in one view. And then you have the plus and minus to zoom in and zoom out here on the left side as well. So those are um, kind of the best ways to move around your work plane and workspace and you can also use a scroll to zoom in and out as well but i think the best way is to just kind of play around with it to get used to it so if you want to pause the video now and practice that feel free now i'm going to move on to manipulating specific shapes and changing the size and dimensions of the shapes so as you can see i have a cube here on my work plane and like I've been saying this whole time, if you 
Before you want to do anything with the shape, you need to click on it and make sure that it is selected and the right shape that you want to change is selected. So there's going to be five important things to look out for when you're changing the way your shape looks. The first is these little white squares that you can see on the corners and bottom of your shape. So these white corners change two edges of your shape and lock in the opposite corner. So what I mean by that is when I click on one of these and drag it, I'm expanding the shape in two directions and the opposite corner is staying put. So that you can be used to change the length, the width, whatever you need really. And the second important thing or tool to use when changing the size of your shape is these little black squares on the edges. And these widen and lengthen your shape. So if you're just looking to make your shape wider or longer, you can use these. The third button or tool is this square white square on the top of your shape which will make your shape taller and shorter the fourth tool is this black triangle at the very top above your shape and this brings your shape up off the work plane or down below it now this is something to keep in mind when we're printing our shapes because we want to make sure that the base of our design is always on the work plane so that when it prints it prints nice and neat and the printer knows what we want to do so just keep that in mind if you are printing to try to keep your shapes on the work plane you can look under and above to make sure it's where it needs to be the last important um, button or feature when changing your shapes is these arrows they come up on the side and up here on the top to rotate your shape. So what you do is just hold down on them and if you drag your mouse above these white, the circle of lines and rotate it, you can rotate it by a single degree. But if you bring your mouse in underneath the circle of lines, you can rotate it by like about 20 degrees. And that goes for the sides and the top as well over here if you would like to rotate your shape. So like I said, you want to make sure that while you're doing this, you're always consistently looking at your work plane, making sure your shape is how you want it, where you want it to be, how you want it to look. And also, you may have noticed that when I click on uh, one of these five different tools that numbers pop up. And these are also an easy way, especially when you're raising and lowering your shapes. If you want to make sure it is down flat on your work plane, you can simply click on these numbers and type in zero to bring it all the way down to the bottom and hit enter and it will do that for you. And that goes for the width, the length, anything. You can type in any number and it'll automatically change. Also, as you can see over here by the whole and solid selection, you can also change length and width using these uh, scrolls as well, which is also nice if you prefer that. However, moving on, I do want to talk about some fun shapes and kind of things that are a little more fun to use when you don't want nice specific shapes. Um, the first one being the scribble tool. So just like a shape, all you do is click and drag it onto your work plane and then you're actually able to draw, design whatever shape you want. So if I wanted something that they didn't have, um, maybe like a heart, I could simply draw it, click done, and now I have that heart on my work plane and I can manipulate it just the same as I would Tinkercad's already designed shapes. But if I do want to delete it, same thing, just hit the delete button and it goes away. Another fun thing to use is this text shape. So it also works the same way. You drag it onto your work plane and then over here is where you would choose what you want it to say and then just hit enter. 
And once again, you manipulate it in the same way you do shapes. Um, very, very nice. You can add that on things. You can make that a whole. Um, it's very common in our sessions as well. And then to delete it, you do the same thing. Just hit delete. So now I'm going to actually create a keychain for you guys using some of the different techniques we've learned in this video. If you want to follow along and try to do it with me, you can pause the video as you go along and maybe try to make the keychain with me. Or if you're feeling confident, just go for it and make your own. But now I will just show you um, how to use a keychain with some of these techniques we learned today. Now, as you have seen, I created the keychain, just a very simple design. I used the whole, I used the scribble function, the text. I wanted to show you guys um, all the things we learned in this video in action. And the last thing I kind of wanted to point out was just I know things may be in different colors, like the text is red, the heart is blue, but when we're printing, we don't have the capabilities, at least our printers do not have the capabilities to do multiple colors in one print. So if you are printing out your design, don't get too stressed out about the different colors and how it would turn out. But maybe if you are just designing it at home, that could be a fun thing you do play around with. But if you do end up printing it out with us, it would just all be one color. So I just Wanted to let you guys know that, but other than that, I hope you learned a lot from this video. Feel free to rewatch it if there's anything you're stuck on, or if you do need additional help, feel free to reach out to someone on the Maker Girl team. We would love to help you learn more about Tinkercad and 3D printing, and we hope we see you at one of our sessions soon or at an online virtual session as well. Thank you.